Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt. Ammunition review today, 300 Blackout. We've reviewed this particular projectile from various other different manufacturers before. This is from Barnes. This is their 220 grain Sierra Match King OTM. Let's show this guy on the table and talk about what we're gonna do today. In full transparency, the fine folks over at Global Ordnance sent over this 300 Blackout along with some other flavors of nine millimeter for us to review with no strings attached. For our 300 Blackout testing, we have three barrel lengths afforded to us, a seven and a half inch, 10 and a half inch, and 16. We're gonna check our velocity and bullet stability in those barrel lengths if we are good to go in subsonic. We'll run these in the suppressor to see what they'll sound like. We'll attempt a practical accuracy test with this load at about 100 yards now in the past. This particular 220 grain OTM I think favors much faster barrel lengths than I have available in my test guns. I have one in seven and one in eight and I think I really need a one in five and one in six to get better accuracy out of this load. Typically, depending on which one of those barrel lengths I'm shooting, I'm gonna see anywhere from two to six inches. We'll start with our shortest barrel length which is our seven and a half inch PSA pistol build. We did not get cycling. Now the cycling could be on me. These are probably meant to be ran with a can or with a certain buffer. We are subsonic, so that is a good thing. We'll have to see how this load does with our longer barrel lengths. And now our 10 and a half inch upper, another PSA build, got a Yankee Hill three port QD muzzle brake up front. Got lock back. We are still subsonic. We're getting good clean holes in there, so we should be able to throw the cans on there. We may have to do that for some auxiliary footage. And now onto our 16 inch. This is where it can get a little squirrely depending on the load development. You can go supersonic with a longer barrel. This is another PSA build. Oh, we're very close to supersonic with this load in the 16 inch. We did get locked back. Let's throw the can on this and see if we go super. We've got our JK Armament rifle kit on here. Let's see if we go super. We'll do the same with the ten and a half inch. That was actually a light primer. Or, sorry, not a light primer, a hard primer there. That one did not go off. All right, here comes a lot of excuses, but I think this is proof from what's been mentioned in the comments below about selecting the right barrel twist for your projectiles and your setup, depending on what you're gonna do. And I think that's seen here with our 300 Blackout 220 grain Sierra from Barnes. 
Normally in the past with a 220 grain TMJ, we've seen excellent results accuracy wise out of both shorter barrel lengths. The seven and a half inch of mine has a one in seven twist and the eight, the 10 and a half inch has a one in eight and our 16 has a one in eight as well. I think maybe we need a one in five or one in six. So here was our seven and a half inch at 100 yards. Got it in a lead sled with a first focal plane scope, 2.957 inches. Here's our 16 inch unsuppressed best group of the day, 0.923 inches. Then we threw the JK armament rifle kit back on there because we thought maybe that was causing a dispersion. 1.361 inches, still not bad. Then down here, this is our 16 inch suppressed with the YHM Phantom M2, 2.327 inches. Now our 10 and a half inch with the one and eight twist barrel, for whatever reason, maybe it's that barrel. This was suppressed seven and a half inches. It's just horrible. Couldn't get anything on paper. That was with a one to six first focal plane scope. It's the LVPO from Tacticon, a little fuzzy at 100 yards, but in the lead sled, I was able to hold our reticle dead center there, and that's just what I got. So that's why I always say your mileage may vary, but as mentioned in the comments, I think twist rate is very crucial when we're sh shooting some of these longer subsonics in 300 blackout. Well, folks, there you have it. We had good subsonic velocities in all three of our very common barrel lengths in 300 blackout. We had a little bit of trouble cycling in our seven and a half inch, but again, this is a subsonic round meant to be suppressed. So throwing the suppressor on there is gonna give you a little more back pressure to allow that gun to cycle. Now, as far as our accuracy goes, I mentioned in the beginning, I think we're seeing a suboptimal barrel twist rate for the guns that I have in this particular bullet. I've tested a berries or a plated 220 grain FM or TMJ in the past, and that thing gave me really good results in 100 yards. But this particular bullet, no matter who loads it, I just don't have the greatest accuracy for it. Now, for 300 blackout, 100 yards may be pushing it, but I feel that you should be able to reach out to at least two, two to 300 yards with this load. So again, your mileage may vary when it comes to those accuracy tests. With all that being said, it's time for me to get the heck out of here. But at the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who help make these possible because there's a lot that goes into them. Number one is my Patreon and subscribe star fans. I have a link tree in the description below with various different ways to either contact me or support me through any affiliate links if you want to give back to the channel so I can purchase probably maybe some new barrels for those uppers, maybe a one in five. Number two is the five people over at Global Ordnance. Again, in full transparency, they sent me over this Barnes ammunition to review with no strings attached. And of course, number three is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.